Hello and welcome to Catch More Media. In tonight's show, we join the Maruku Pro Team at the lovely Alders Farm Fishery in Buckinghamshire. We look at some exciting new products that are set to hit the market and spend some time catching up with Andy Dixon and Howard Kay, who tell us of some exciting plans that they have for coming months. You've just started with a new and quite exciting project with Maruku. Yeah. We have. We, um, I've been with Maruku for about 14 months now. Mm. And we highlighted there's a, a gap in the market for us to exploit. And with us being so scientifically backed, we're trying now to produce ranges of product to suit all genres of angling, whether it's pleasure angler, match angler, also with a real, you know, a turn towards the natural venue. Yeah. So as such, we're now bringing out a, uh, a roach mix, river, lake, a really superb bream mix which is being developed which will hopefully take the market apart but we're also extending our what we say our commercial range mm. so in our focus amino range we're bringing out a focus meaty pellet as opposed to the standard focus amino we're upping the size to 10 mil now to cater for waters like boddington when you're fishing having to feed long range and we're also bringing out a new range of soft hooker pellets a new krill pure krill margin mix uh, it's really exciting and for the you know the really popular sticky method pellet that, that's uh, done really well in the UK it's uh, the only negative side to that is a lot of fisheries only allow their own pellet so we're now bringing out our own flavoured sticky method powder with, made from the same recipe as the sticky method pellets but then you can fish with your favourite Maruki sticky method pellet just by adding the powder to the fishery own pellet so it's really exciting time for us yeah definitely I mean one of the things that I've always sort of been impressed with with Marukia is the science that goes into it. Yes. A lot of people don't realise, but it's actually the biggest bait company in the world. Is that correct? Absolutely. One hundred percent. No, it's the biggest. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely huge. Massive in the Far East. Yes. And since launching here about sort of six, seven years ago, the emphasis that's been put into developing bait specifically for UK waters is, yes. is massive, isn't it? It is. And because anything that Maruku, uh, that we put out as Maruku, has to be scientifically proved to A, not be to the detriment of the water, and more importantly, not to the detriment of the fish. So, you know, science coupled with nature, that is our mission statement thanks for the fish and nature and that is the the logo from uh, Maruku in Japan and so any fishery owner if you if he's got an angler he's buying product and he's putting it into his lake of the anglers coming in using it he knows it will not harm a his fish and it will not harm the water quality and that's really really important nowadays in this ecologically sound world that we uh, we live in Absolutely. Well, you've yeah, got yeah. a lot of your pro team on the lake today. We're here we at, have. at Alders Farm, as yeah. we say. Stunning place. It's Stunning gorgeous, place. Isn't it? Pines later on today, so yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing how these baits work. Absolutely. And there'll be we're launching a new bait today called the Four Bands, which is four bands, strangely. Great for fishing as a straight lead, great fishing the pellet waggler. It's a focus amino, so it's leaching out constantly. As soon as it's in the water, it's leaching out aminos. We're doing it in a range of seven or eight flavours. I hope a lot of our anglers today, and we've got some really good anglers amongst us, I hope they're going to be taking this water apart using the new four bands. Well, I'm looking forward to having a look at it. Howard, thanks very much. Let's thank you, on, Tom. Uh, go and see how they're getting on. OK, thank you. So who are the Maruku Pro Team? In short, a range of expert individual anglers who Maruku have recruited to help them test and develop products for the UK market. We asked them to introduce themselves. My name's Diamond Green, I'm from Cannock and my biggest weight's 107 pound in the winter. Lee Hodgkinson from Derby, uh, qualified for Maver Match this, this year. My name's Ray Tool from Bournemouth, best match weight 100 pound in a three hour match. Alan Rainbow from Nottingham, best match weight, 165 pound, Billinger. Uh, Stuart Fotheringham from Leeds, uh, best angle achievement, pro probably two section wins in his nationals. Ben Smith um, from Norfolk, 2015 still war champion. Stuart Campbell from Kidderminster, age 36, biggest match weight, 219 pound in three hour evening match. Name's Dean Jones from Northamptonshire and biggest match weight is £298. James Moore, Mablethorpe, age 24, best match weight, £100, 3 ounce, Herons Mead. Matt Melia from Rotherham, best angler achievement, qualifying for British Pole Champs in 2014. Uh, Liam Dennett, I'm from Eversham, age 19, best match weight, £222. Stuart Eaton from Bournemouth, biggest match weight, £220 in three hours. 
I'm Ian Kent, I'm 47 from Boston, uh, biggest match weight 264 pounds. My name's John Varningham from Lincoln, my biggest match weight is 256 pounds. Phil Reynolds, 45 from Kidderminster, best achievement, uh, winning day one at White Acres in a festival. Martin Stokes from Warrington, best match, match weight, 300 pounds at Erinbrook. Chris Tallon from Gloucester, age 37, biggest angling achievement, Fishermania finalist. The lads were soon set up and fishing. And one of the first people to get into fish was an old friend of mine, Ian Kent from Boston, who looked to be putting a few fish together up in the water. Fishing away, oldest farm fishery on Pines Pool. Bad five or six early fish. Feeding four mil fishery pellets with a six mil Maruku amino focus pellet on the hook. Um, and just thought I'd give these new bandums a go. I've put a 8 mil Umani flavour and see what happens. Just fishing 14 metres, slapping the rig over. Wind's just calmed down nicely now. Oh. That's nice. Keep feeding, 10 or 12 four mils. The fish are already there, they're already up on the surface. With the wind pushing hard towards the top end of the lake, it was no surprise to see the anglers up here start catching very well. Leading the pack, in our opinion, was Stuart Fotheringham, who was putting an excellent net of fish together on the method feeder. I'm just fishing the method feeder down the edge uh, with the fishery pellets micros and just putting uh, the new Maruku 4 bands on the, on the, in the band and just chucking it down edge. And it's wrapping most times, so they obviously don't mind them. Might not wrap now for saying that. <laughs> I'm just chucking it down edge because there's, there is there's that many fish that I've tried to fish the pole, and as soon as you put a bit of bait in, you're just getting lined to death. There's, there's just so many fish there, so I thought the best way around that's just to chuck the method in.
And I'm just feeding this in case this dies, so chuck the waggler over it. But I think they'll be down the edge most of the day. A relatively new face at the camp is the recently appointed operations manager Andy Dixon. I was keen to find out what his plans are for the company. Andy, you're a top natural venue angler in your own right. I've certainly yeah. heard your name on the circuit and I know you do very well. Um, but you've only been with Maruki about two months now, since February. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you think of the company and what changes have you brought in to improve things? Well, as far as the company is concerned, it's it's uh, it's exciting for me. I, I'm very much sort of the, the ecological side of the of the company is important. Uh, the the scientific testing and, and uh, research that goes behind the products uh, is fascinating for me. I have a background in in the koi carp industry for for many years, involved in importing Japanese koi. So I've sort of come full circle from, from my early days in my youth with my father in the koi industry into the sort of the angling circuit, doing well in the natural venues and then coming back round and here I am back with a Japanese company again, uh, hopefully with a few more trips to Japan and, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, I am a natural venue angler predominantly, although uh, Howard and the, and the team are sort of pushing me towards the natural venue, the, uh, the commercial venue somewhat, we'll see. Uh, looking forward to the season on the Trent, to be honest. Uh, but that aspect of my fishing, I'm bringing into the, the Maruku brand now to develop more natural venue products. Uh, I was just going to ask you, because you have actually got a natural venue range coming out soon, haven't you? We have. We've, got, uh, we've been testing uh, quite extensively on Southfields uh, Reservoir with Dave Berry, a really fantastic bream mix, which he's done incredibly well on, qualified for the uh, feeder masters using it. Uh, had some good anglers either side of him. Uh, Stevie Ringer was next door, so I saw uh, that, right? Was yeah, that on the mix, yeah, was it? It was, yeah, right. yeah. So uh, that was that was a good result. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then mixes for the Trent, for the drains. I love the drains fishing in the winter time and the old Neen places like that. So yeah, we've got some exciting, exciting mixes. It's massively exciting. I mean, you, you mentioned you've worked in the koi carp industry, but I suppose yeah. for an angler, getting a job in the angling industry <laughs> and with a company like Maruku is, is a dream, isn't uh, it? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I've been. Sort of involved say in the koi side and then i got into more sort of sales uh developed a digital media company had many many years uh, in that aspect as an operations director so it's it's that side that i'm bringing to the business uh, is is operations yeah. in, in overseeing and trying to bring everything together and make it all work efficiently so we're you know a lot of the focus now at boston where we've we've got uh, multiple large units for manufacturing storage and distribution is to is to streamline everything so we can we can support the retailers better we can we've got more point of sale coming in stands uh, you know we're having a new website developed uh, which is going to be fantastic everything will have uh, uh, QR codes on them and uh, anglers will be able to sort of scan the, the QR codes and get all the information direct from the website they'll be able to find where the retailers are uh, so that's an important aspect to support the retailer better and to give the angler the information on how best to use the products so you know EFGs for instance are a range that have been around for a long while that has probably little understanding you know EFG 131 what does it mean yeah. well we're going to make sure that that information is available and how best to use these in conjunction with which products of so that's and and some of these products are in, incredible and they're not just, you know, a, a mixture of two or three different raw ingredients and it's, it's this or that. There's a lot of science behind it. Every single product has to go through uh, a lot of testing in Japan. There's 12 bait scientists there and uh, it's, it's extensive as to what they put into making sure that it has the right percentages in to achieve the right uh, required results always always making sure that it is uh, beneficial to the fish's own development the aminos in there which fish need aminos all the time uh, it, it's it's key so it's fish health it's fishery health 
uh, and it's importantly for the angler, it ensures that you'll catch more fish. So uh, very that's exciting. That's the most important thing, isn't it? I suppose it's uh, you know a lot of baits out there catch anglers, but Maruki have got a team of scientists behind it. You know, biggest bait company in the yeah. world, a lot of experience there, and. As we'll see today, these baits really do catch a lot of fish, don't they? They, they do, and the, the key has been the last few years is to try and now develop baits that are more for the UK and European market as opposed to the Japanese and Asian markets, which are very different. They tend to use the ground bait, it, that is the entire bait. They don't add particles to it, they don't add to. It is a, a in the bag, use it, that's all they fish with and they even make every, all the ground baits into paste and use it like that. So they've had to be educated somewhat to a different way of angling in that yeah. we use baits as attractants but to carry particles. So we've had to evolve different ranges to suit the UK market and that's what we're doing at the moment and we've got some exciting products. Well, I think really you've got are. some very exciting times ahead from what you've said. Should we go out and have a look how the protein yeah. are doing it today? Yeah, excellent, we'll let's see. Giving Stu Fotheringham a good run for his money on the next peg was Bournemouth based angler Stuart Eden, who was putting a nice net of fish together on paste. Yeah, so I've had uh, a really good run on paste today. Um, started on paste, um, and all I'm using is these screw pellets, four mil. Pour them into boiling water, and um, just let them soak in, and you're away to ready to go. Um, the rig I'm using is 015 Preston Powerline, um, using a PR margin, uh, paste margin and a 4B18 going down to an 013 Guru Wen gauge with a size 14B911. Bang opposite Stuart Eden was Stuart Campbell. We had a blistering start catching down the edge, but sadly, when I turned up with the camera, the fish seemed to do a bit of a disappearing act. Still, it seemed obvious to me that with the wind pushing down this end of the lake, that Stu Campbell, Stu Eden and Stu Fotheringham would make it a three-way stew pot for the top three prizes. Before I left, I was keen to spend a few more minutes with Andy Dixon as I wanted to find out which mixers had been working for him, given the fact that he spends most of his time on natural venues. Right, so I'm going to talk to you about three products in particular that I use a lot and have a lot of faith in. Sweet Fish Meal Black, uh, superb, fairly low food value product, uh, a great base mix. It can be used on its own. Lots of anglers have had success uh, using it purely as a silver fish mix. Uh, it's very, very good to use on bream venues. Uh, if you want to add a bit more food value to it as the season goes on and the fish are feeding more, then you can add products such as 131 if you want to bring uh, bigger fish into the swim and hold them. If you want to uh, bring smaller fish in, then you can use the Nori G. Uh, let's uh, let you have a look.
So as you can see, very, very fine powder, fine, fine mix. Mixes up very easy, no need to riddle at all. Uh, it's got a fish meal base in there as well, so very, very attractive. Uh, 131, great bait for adding to, as are a lot of the EFG ranges. They are combination ground baits. They can be used independently on their own. Norwich G is fantastic silverfish mix. Uh, 131, you can use on its own for you know bigger fish, holding bigger fish, carp, bream, tench, etc. Uh, much coarser grain, much higher nutritional value. So we'll hold fish for a lot longer. Norrie G. Seaweed based, very fine, excellent, excellent mix. So three mixes I have a lot of confidence in, used in various ways. Generally speaking, I'll put a bed of sweet fish meal black down if I want to hold some bigger fish or attract bigger fish over that bed, I'll put a few feederfuls in, uh, or if you're cupping it in, just one or two balls of the 131. The 131, say, is a much higher food value and will hold those fish over that. Nori G, two, two weak reasons for using this. If you're on a venue where you feel there's a need to pull the smaller fish in, first of all, then this has that, that effect. It also helps to darken the two mixes together if you put the black with the nori G, actually combine to make a very, very dark mix. So you can use it to, to have that effect. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the three different mixes to show you what they are independently and then how they can be mixed together. So sweet fish meal black. Very easy to mix. No need to riddle. There's no large particles in here to riddle out. No need to introduce air when you're mixing ground bait. Why do you want air in the mix? Uh, you want it on the bottom, everything absorbed. So, sweet fish meal black. Easy as that to mix up. One, three, one see much larger particle absorbs a bit more water being a larger particle so I tend to leave this for a little while and add more water once it's taken some of that on very very strong fish meal Norrie G You can see how easy all three of these are to mix. Really, really easy. So these are the three mixes in my early days with Maruku, which I've become very confident in and uh, look forward to using these throughout the season. What I'm going to show you is how, how they can be used together and, and how, how I use them. The Sweet Fish Meal Black is my base mix. The 131, if I was at a venue such as uh, a good example, Southfields, where there are some you know, good sized bream, but there are a lot of skimmers in there, the Sweet Fish Meal Black will pull, the, pull all fish in. But putting a few feederfuls in of the 131 over the top means you're giving something to hold those fish in there, hold them for a, a reasonable amount of time. Probably every 45 minutes to an hour, I'll pop another three feederfuls in over the top and then I'd revert back to using the black. So I'm not overfeeding them, but it's holding them in enough. If I felt, if it was in the cooler months and I wanted a slightly darker mix, or if I was fishing for generally smaller skimmers, then I'd add the Nori, the, uh, Nori G. Now the Nori G, added to the sweet fish meal black darkens it it has a darkening effect 
if I was to give this a mix. You'll see it's darkening. The green is adding to the black and making it that, that bit darker. If you was to mix, let's say, if you was to mix the sweet fish meal black on its own, And again, I'm not riddling these, I'm not riddling these because there is no large particles in there to remove. It is a fine mix. There is no need. That darkens the mix off. The green added to it darkens it off. And that's a great mix for, for uh, skimmers. Perfect mix for skimmers. As I said, if I was going to go purely for the bigger fish and I didn't want to attract many small fish in, I'd use the 131 over the top. So you can see the effect that would have the bed of the Black Lake and a little bit of 131 over the top to hold the fish there, but not too much. With the thoughts that go into the baits that Maruku make, it's easy to see why they prove so popular. Next week, we bring you the highlights from one of the premier events on the commercial fishing calendar, the Daiwa Pole Fishing Masters. Until then, folks, stay safe.